Welcome to Elm Street, merch available now on SourKidsMerch.com. Yo, 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 what's up, what's up, what's good, man? Welcome to another episode of Welcome to Elm Street. I'm your boy, I'm your host, Money Elms, man. What's good out there, man? I just want to thank everybody like I always do in the beginning. You know, salute to y'all for tuning in and uh, showing mad love, mad support, you know, because, um, you know, there'll be a lot of haters out there. So I appreciate all my <laughs> my day ones, man, keeping it real and you know, keep supporting your boy, man. I appreciate y'all, because without y'all, you know, I ain't nobody out here. But, uh, man, I got a great show tonight, man. I got, um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce my guest. I got Latin Prince. What it is, baby boy. What oh, it is. man. Appreciate you having me on the, on the podcast, brother. You know, it's been a minute. We've been trying to get this going for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I appreciate you, and I respect you, and everything you do, bro. Man, and I'm glad to be it. here to share my story. Yeah. And to talk about other things. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. You know, we're going to get into it, man. Because, you, know uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's been happening right now. And, uh, you know, some stuff that I'm excited about, some stuff I'm like, ah, oh, you know. But it's a, it's a lot of stuff going on right now. And, um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and get right to it, man. We won't keep y'all waiting, man, and just get straight to the sauce, man. So, you know, I've been following the story since it, it went down. Um, when it was, you know, the beginning of uh, those Puffy and Cassie allegations, you know what I mean? And let me tell you something, bro. I have a, a really good friend of mine. Really, actually, is the guy who runs my. He's my webmaster. Yeah. And his barber is Diddy's barber. Oh wow! So you already know stuff that was covered to me about the whole situation, and he was saying to you know he was saying to my boy, "Listen, man, it ain't over." There's a lot of more stuff coming. And this is just at the beginning when, in that whole, like you said, the whole situation with Cassie. Yeah. We, you know, that was just one piece of the big puzzle. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because, you know, I was like, the things that were told, I was like, wow. I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, this is crazy. You yeah. know? And, 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 and it's crazy because um, when a lot of footage that they're bringing back, you're like, oh shit, you know what I mean? Mm, makes you, you know, think. it makes you, it makes you think. You know yeah. what I mean? You know, there's, you know, there's some. Uh, so I guess back in the day, you know, Diddy had that. Uh, what was it? Uh, Flavor Camp. Yes. Yeah, Diddy's Flavor Camp. You know what I mean? And he would take all these, uh, like, um, underage, um, inspiring actors, mm -hmm. singers, everything, whatever. And you know, a few of them, you know, were Usher. You know, you had Justin Bieber, you had even uh, Will Smith's son, uh, Jaden. Yeah, Jaden. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you know, there's there's a few more out there. You know what I mean? Even even uh, what's his name, uh, Orlando Brown, from uh, uh, Soul Raven, mm -hmm. that show. Yes. And it's, and it's crazy because you know he was making allegations about Diddy a while back. You know, a lot of people have been saying things for quite a while, but mm -hmm. they just they just haven't been able to follow up. Yeah, and they, you know, and don't don't get it twisted. This man is very powerful. Yeah, and he could cover a lot of tracks. He has a very powerful team, some powerful attorneys. So you know, he's gonna try to throw as much smoke as he can. You oh know, yeah. To, I mean, cause I mean, he's still carrying on like like nothing. Yeah, like everything's cool. Like you know, you know, everybody you know they raided the house in L.A. His sons got arrested. This dude is. Jet setting somewhere, you know, what I mean? trying to get out of out of you know out of town and stuff. Yeah. And you know, we haven't really heard much since he, you know, since I guess his arrest, you know, or whatnot. But yeah, I mean, you know, I figured they were done. Um, got a search, you know, got a warrant for his arrest. But all they did was get that search warrant for his mansion. His so. mansions. You're you know right. what I mean? Both Miami and LA. So, well, the, you know, it's supposedly, you know, the rumors start circulating, and uh, they were saying, you know, a little bit after he got raided, you know, he flew out, mm -hmm. and he was on his way out of the, the yeah. And then where he went, it was somewhere that there's, can, no, there's no extradition. There's no, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So a lot of people said, well, that's where he took the tapes. 
or the all the evidence, you know what I mean? Supposedly, you know what I mean? Yes, sir. I mean, now is you know those you know those rumors or you know they sound like conspiracies, but then you know a lot of times what sounds like conspiracies it could be just the truth. Exactly. But, I mean, the same thing we could say about the situation with R. Kelly. You know what I'm saying? That yeah. was crazy. Allegations. I'm sure there will be some Netflix story coming up. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With some of these victims and stuff. So stay tuned. <laughs> the Diddy train is not stopping right now. <laughs> I mean, or or they could just be collecting evidence, man. Just just piling it up. You know how it is. The government just you know they have to just grab as much stuff. When, yeah. So you know. So by the time they they get you, you know, they get you. Hey, but I mean. They're they're talking about that you know Diddy was also like an informant, you know what I mean? And you yeah. know a lot of the times when they're informants, you know they could get away with a lot more shit than if they weren't, and they just kind of sweep it under the rug type. But you know, listen, man. Supposedly he Stay got tuned. shit on a lot of people. Yes, I'm sure he does. <laughs> I'm sure he does. You know, a lot of people that were joining those uh, those parties. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? So. He has videos. He has pictures. He has a lot. Man. So if he goes down, he's taking a lot, a lot of people down with him as well. So, I mean, I heard a rumor, you know, that Jay Z's involved somehow, some way in this yeah. whole situation. So, like I said, it's a it's a very good book. <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind buying it. <laughs> hey, and it, and it's still being written. Yes, sir. You know, so uh, you know, yeah. hopefully, you know, you're you got your popcorn ready. And, Man, uh, I wish we could get him for an interview, bro. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> right, <laughs> but uh, man, yeah, man. So, man, in case you've been under a rock, man, you know, right now there's, you know, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's ever been a stir up in beef like the way it is now, right now in the rap game. You know what? With that said, you know, it's to me, it's like, is it a serious beef? You know, the shots are being taken. You know, about allegations as well, you know, with Drake, under you know, underage situations, mm. uh uh, you know, from Kendrick's side, talk about, you know, just and then apparently they go on stage and apologize. Am I am I am I saying this wrong? Well, it was actually like, did he did he go to Ch well, Coachella? Well, it was and, uh was J. It, Cole. J was it J. Cole who apologized the, to Kendrick? Yeah, because he came out with his diss track. Right. You know, as soon as he, and I heard he apologized, but then yeah. he did it publicly. Yeah, with him, on, I don't know. It's just like, listen, man. You know, I don't know what kind of beef. Uh, you know, how you you address a beef, and mm. you know, and then you go out and apologize after you know you took shots. You know, supposedly they're saying that. Uh, I heard a rumor the other day that I don't know if it's true or not that uh, one of his uh, bodyguards or yes, got shot. Drake's yeah, yeah. His bodyguards got shot. Yeah, yeah. So his home got shot, shot up. So. Uh, Apparently there was some situation going on at the home. Yeah, and his bodyguard got shot. Yeah, that you is know. true. So, is, is it a coincidence? I don't know, man. You know, it's, um, it's crazy. You know how yeah, it is. You know, some some people really take you know beef to the to next the next level. level. You know and you know, mean? sometimes it's not even like you know, like you said, it's not even on the artist. It's sometimes their entourage. Sometimes the fans could be getting involved. Some. Some real hardcore fans mm. will take it upon themselves and take the law into their own hands. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just like, you know, and then, like, what, what's going on here? You know, it's like. What That's why they're called fanatics. Fanatics, for sure, man. You know so, what I mean? Because, you know, they're, they're, they're on a different level, bro. 100%. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, like I say, it's not, it's not the artist, but, you know, the people they follow really closely. And some people who are such fanatics that just don't want to hear anything bad about their artists. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, I hate that dude. Like, what? Oh, hell no. I'm about to take him out. So, you know, it, it's crazy because a lot of these artists now, they have these uh, these followers, these uh, these part fanatics. of the fan club, yes. right? And they they got names. Like, Beyonce got the Beehive. Mm -hmm. And then Taylor got the Swifties. The clans. You the know what I mean? So, yes. I'm like, damn. Like, these, these are... Ride or die, dark heart, course, die hard fans. These are guy, guys, girls. I mean, people who spend a lot of money on these artists. People who you know give up their rent, their rent check to go see them on the show. 
Mm-hmm. I eat Bad Bunny, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Latinos, man, they're out there in the streets begging for money because they they spend man all the and cash. hey, he be selling out the arenas, bro. bro. And you know, not just small little venues, arenas. Let me tell you something. I refuse. I listen. I this is one. This is one, okay. This is a f- cute couple of things I want to address. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a lawsuit, a clash action lawsuit going on right now. Um, Madonna's getting sued. And, and, and it looks like Nicki Minaj is next. Oh, wow. By fans because they're sick and tired of waiting for these people to show up the, or start the shows mm. super late. It's disrespectful from the, you know, t- from an artist to disrespect their fans by, you know, starting a show an hour or more late. You know what I'm saying? Who does yeah. that shit? So now, okay, you know what? You're going to do that? You're going to make us pay all this money for these shows? We're going to sue you wow. for, you know, starting the shows late. So you better show up on time and do your thing because we are paying so you can show up on time so you can do the show. We don't have time to hear, you know. Man, what do you think about that? I mean, I think that's crazy, bro. I mean, because I've even <clears throat> heard of people waiting four hours Is this or even longer, bro. Disrespectful. By yeah. all means, listen, let's say you spend a G on a ticket to go see somebody. You know, to be to, to get floor seats, and then you're there like a clown, you know, waiting for the for the artist to finally show up. And this, if they show up, if they show up, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, people are just sick and tired of their, you know, their behavior, and people are gonna take it to, you know, so this the only way to make a change is to affect the pockets. Oh yeah, and that's what's gonna happen. Oh yeah. So man. people are taking it upon themselves, you know, lot, you know, class action lawsuits, bro. Yeah. You know, by a lot of people, and they're gonna win. They are gonna win. Hey, believe it or not. <laughs> you know, enough is enough. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know. I mean, a lot of times, you know, a lot of artists they, you know, they take advantage of their popularity. Yeah, and uh, well, it's, it's not fair to you know to their fans. You well, know you know what's I mean? what, not fair to the fans either. It's like the you know, this is my my beef. It's like oh, you know, I'm the artist. I sell my show to let's say Ticketmaster mm-hmm. or to Live Nation, and then Live Nation turns around and they skyrocket the tickets. You know, it's just, it's, uh, again, not one, like I said, like your true fans who are not carrying, a, you know, all this money in their pockets, they can not go see a show because it's too expensive. Mm. Nowadays, to go see a show is way too expensive. It was never like that back in the days. Let's go back 20, 30 years. It was never this expensive to go to a show. What's the difference between then and now? It's like, you know what, just pyrotechnics or your show is just more expensive because, you know, you have 20 trucks carrying all your stuff mm. or your show is so fancy that you have to charge people so much money. Hey, I don't think even Michael Jackson charged. Bro, that never. And now it's like- it's, But see, he didn't it's, have to because he was guaranteed to sell out the whole arena. Exactly. And it's, it's just, like I said, and these artists are selling out. Taylor Swift selling out, at and there. Bad Bunny, the same thing. But still- yeah, it's not fair for the the fans to, like I said, the true fans. Because I notice a lot of people that go to the show, they just do it because of social media. It's the crowd. Brag. I'm at the Bad Money show. Let me take pictures. Oh, video. Blah, 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 blah. I'm here. I'm here. But the true, like real, like f- like let's go back fanatics. Like the the true, you know, like let's say you want to take your family to go see Bad Bunny or somebody like that. Can you afford to take you know your entire family? Not really. You know, I mean, if, they're, if they're charging a lot of money, <laughs> you're not going to be able to take your entire family, like 300. I think the Taylor Swift tickets, the lowest ones, the lowest tickets were like 350 per head. The lowest, the bottom, and you were in up there on there's, the top. There's probably an abstraction. You, can't even you know see what I'm anything. saying? You're like, need a binoculars, bro, to be able to see this shit. That's just, you know, again, the level of disrespect by these artists, um, it just has to stop. You need like it's it's only fair that you know that you are able to uh, to make it affordable for your fans to be able to come see you. Yeah, you know when you start charging crazy money, I mean, look, they're making money. Oh yeah, they're making bank. You know, you know what I'm saying. So, we don't hate the fact that they're making money. I'm just you know? de- I'm just the devil's advocate, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So I'm just, I just want I just want my I just want the fans to win. Yeah, you know what I'm saying I just so um, you know I'm back back to the back to the beef. So who do you think, you know? So far for me, I think Drake has it. You, you think so? Yes, sir. I don't know, man. I think I think Kendrick kind of came out, you know, knocking te- heads te- off. Kendrick took too long. 
I mean, I like, and you know, I always been in, on the border when it came to Kendrick. His last album was like, mm, it didn't move me. I mean, there's a few songs that I still play, you know, yeah. in my shows, but you know, you never know what Drake is cooking too. So, oh yeah, you know, yeah. We we'll see. But hey, but like, I mean, I like, I like. I mean, Drake said some some mean things. Drake, I mean, and Kendrick. Oh yeah, went in. I and like I think that uh, that euphoria. I, I think that one. Yeah. You know, I like the the switch up the he way did he on talked there. About his, you know, his family. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he does yeah. get a little personal, man. Yeah, he went in, bro. Like mom, dad. You know, it's like crazy, bro. Like, yeah, but we you know, shall see. Hey, but are we seeing Drake or is it like you know like like Kendrick said, am I facing a Ghost Rider or AI? Uh, we don't know. Mm-hmm. Who is really battling? You know what I mean? Because put him on know, stage. There's bro. always those rumors put about Drake. Stage. You know, put him on stage. <laughs> <laughs> put him on stage. You know, like like the voice. <laughs> and we have some judges. In hey, there. they they should do. Uh, are they still doing the what was that? Um, the remember? thing with uh, with Lionel Richie. No, no, no. It was um, nah. It was the hip hop. Uh, what's it? Called? Oh no, yeah, I don't think so. You don't remember? The- the contest, Is it I mean, the vote? The... nah, it's um, remember they were doing uh, <clears throat> there was a lot of groups that would kind of go at each other. The versus, the versus battle, the versus, yes, you know, uh, that was amazing. I love the versus. I mean, that was, I think that was kind of like uh, like a pandemic kind of thing, you know, yeah, but saying? you know, still after the pandemic was over, they still they did you for know, a little bit, and I, but I think it just kind of died off. It died I off. mean, they, I, I liked it because they went from older artists to new artists, yeah. You know, and there was like some artists that like like let's say Buster wanted to battle somebody, but then that one person didn't want to battle them, so it became a little. I think it was like Swiss Beats was in the mix. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Swiss was Beats. Part, and, he was part of that. Uh, I think what's situation. His name? Timberland. Yeah, and Tim. Yeah, Tim. Yeah. I love Timberland, man. Yeah, he's a savage. Mm-hmm. He's reinventing himself, man. He's. I was the other day. I was watching something. Well, like, this is a while back where he's like, "Yo, where's Romeo Santos? I, I got a bachata song for him." Bam. Wow. This track was fire. I was like, "Oh snap! Look at this!" <laughs> <He's> <laughs> you know, he's that. like, "You can just, you just never know what you're gonna get from Timbo, man." Oh yeah, the dude is a, he's yeah, a savage. He's, he's a, a genius. talented producer. Man. Oh yeah, man. He's a genius, man. He's... But do you think you think the whole beef is fabricated, or is it a you know real beef? Because you know, there's well, the question is, is J Cole done? I think he is. He's yeah, he's you know. He spoke and now he, he's you moved say, on. You know, he don't want he's no moved on. Now, yeah. now let's let all the, you know, others get into this mix. Yeah, because I mean, you know, Kendrick's not the only one coming at uh, at uh, Drake. You know, you got Rick Ross. Rick Ross came at him. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, you yeah. got uh, Travis Scott came at him. Even ASAP Rocky, but it is it was the reason because Drake kind of took shots. At, yeah, he was and, taking snipes. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. So all these people were like, "Oh yeah, so, oh." You know, they brought him. They, he brought him into the mix, so everybody's like, just trying to snipe back. No, oh, yeah, take a little bite of a crime. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we should I mean, see. We should see. Like I said, I'm not. You know, like I said, um, it's kind of quiet right now. Besides the shots that we're taking, but yeah. uh, <laughs> we shall see. How you never know. Next week something might drop. You know, so it's uh, stand by. Oh yeah, because it's not finished. Oh yeah, we're not done like this. So we're yeah, not done. stay tuned to see what happens, man. Yes, but sir. you know, hopefully, you know, it, it stays on wax. You know, yeah. it, you know, we don't need no, we don't need no, nobody dying. Yeah, over exactly. Some over, over some over some bullshit. You know, over you know. some lyrics. You know what I mean? We don't you want know. that. You know, the thing that happened to Biggie and Pac. You know, yeah, yeah, exactly. We don't want to lose. You know, more great artists, man. We already mm-hmm. had enough of them. You know, pass and you know, yes, let's just keep it on wax and just keep it moving. You know. You know, just yeah. what 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 hip hop is. Yeah, it's always been like even you know you get to talk mad madness mm-hmm. you know on record, and you know you could go back and forth and who you know lyrically is what the battle is all about. Yeah, you know whoever has the best lines, whoever yeah, has the best, best punch know. lines, and yes. you know best disses, and you know what I mean. And, and that's it. Keep it at that. Hey, leave, yeah, it, leave, yeah. it, leave it. Leave it. Leave it at that. And he got roasted. Hey, it hey. is. What speaking it about is. roasting, did you see the Tom Brady roast? Man, that was amazing. <laughs> Bro, he got destroyed. Yo, that was amazing. Oh, Netflix yeah. killed it. Yeah, man. So you know, it, we haven't seen a whole lot of those either. 
the roast. Yeah, they kind of just died down, you know. A little bit, but this one was wow, man. I feel bad for his wife, his <laughs> ex wife, his ex wife. Dude, they were going in on her, bro. Talking about that, you know, karate trainer that you know apparently she was, you know, she got involved with. So wow. I'm like, oh my, I just they were just. It's a must watch. <laughs> it's a must it's watch. It's a must watch. It's a must watch. You gotta watch it. Hey, it's it's, yeah. it's crazy how you know these cel- celebrities, man. Uh, it, they 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 live a different they live a uh, different lifestyle, man. I'll tell yeah. you that. This thing, I mean, this thing was huge, bro. This uh, they sold out the forum in LA. It's it's a big deal, man. Yeah, for that kind of stuff. But like you said, it's uh, that's what's on the news today. You know, what <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what's popping right now. We got beefs. We got Tom Brady. You know what I'm saying? We got Diddy. We got all kinds of stuff going on in our in our circle of music. Oh yeah, man! And entertainment. It's crazy. You never know. Um, hey, man, that is, it's crazy, dude. Uh, so we got that the what's it called the Jake Paul Mike Tyson fight coming up. Is that happening here in Dallas? Yeah, it's happening in Dallas AT and T Stadium. Oh, man, that's gonna be crazy. Yeah, you know what, bro? I want the man to put a beat down on that dude. Oh yeah, man. I don't know, man. He, you know, I've never been a fan. Of a YouTube star, yeah, who turned into a boxer, like these people who box professionally, yeah, who take them years mm-hmm. to get to a level where they are competitive enough to fight and make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. This is not happening like this dude just makes shit happen overnight. You know what I'm saying? You know his mouth and blah blah blah. blah. You know that's you know he's getting mad millions. I don't know why, but there's other people who are truly champions of the sport that need to get those opportunities to make money. To you know, this is what they do for for a living. They're yeah, not this just is career. They, you know? This is a career thing. It's not like you know. Oh, I just came. You know, I was a YouTube star or a, mm-hmm. you know Instagram or TikTok star, and I became a boxer overnight. And I'm gonna beat up on some on some kids and just you know. I mean, you know, I mean, even this an exhibition fight. Yeah, I still want him to get his ass beat. You know, I don't, I don't hate him as an entrepreneur. You know, I, I give him. That's you, cannot, you cannot hate on the business. No, no, exactly. You know yeah. what I mean. But as you know, I am a fan of boxing of the sport. One hundred percent. I don't like the fact that he kind of makes a mockery. You yes, know, kind of like a yes, mockery of the exactly, sport, bro. Exactly. Just kind of what you said. You know, that's there's what, that's, there's that's real. That's what that's what offends me. You yeah, there's real boxers out there that dedicate their lives, and you know they train. There's people that 100%. die on the board because yeah. of it. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, a punch to the head. Mm. I've seen people f- fall down and and that's the end. You know, you know the only way, I, you know, he would get my respect if he actually goes into the sport and fights real boxers. Right. Not, not, not uh, these re- other celebrities. Yeah, retirees. Retired and, football players or, or whatever UFC. It is. It's not the same. A UFC get and a here, boxer bro. is not but the again, same. He's doing it for entertainment. Yeah, you know, I get it. He's, you know, it's like, let me, you know, it's like he's just doing it for money. It's like this. But he's using the sport and making a mockery out of it. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's that's what I don't, I don't like. Yeah, you know what I'm not mean? a fan. Not a fan. Not a fan at all. We shall see. And So that's why but, I, I don't but we have to blame ourselves. But we have to blame ourselves, too. Yeah, because we we, we, we support that. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, I don't support it, but I'm saying, but other people do. Yeah, that's true. You know, it's a bunch of fools out there giving him money for free. You know what I'm saying? It's like, mm-hmm. why? It's like, he's not, you know, like, there's other, other, you know, athletes out there who need your support. Yeah. You know, but they don't. They support something else. So I know what he's doing now. He's actually, he gone into, uh, he wants to go into the promoting part of it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. As far as like his last fight, you know, he actually had undercards that were actually pro boxers, mm-hmm. you know, so I see what he's trying to do. He's trying to use his lane to push yeah. yeah. So, you know, hey, if you know, if he could bring some of the the big names and create some big yeah. uh, boxing matches like, you know, Golden Boy and and you know, those Man. type of you know, hey. That fight last week, bro. What you I think? F- I felt like it was between, you know, De La Hoya and your boy, man. <laughs> 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 they hate each other like a mother, man. Those oh, two yeah. fools. Calling them so, oh my god, that that interview over it was, I was dying, bro. I mean, it, I was dying, but it's this, crazy. But there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff going on back that we don't even know. Mm-hmm. 
you know, between Canelo and, and, uh, and you know, Oscar. And, De La, and Oscar, man. There's, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of darkness back there that we have no idea because, you know, they just, you know, somebody somebody did something bad. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And that's where the disrespect starts and it goes from there, man. It's crazy. Man. So who did you, who were you rooting for the fight? I was, you know, I like Canelo. Canelo? You know, but, you know, but I like the new kid, but I didn't yeah. like, I don't like his mouth. You know what? I, I didn't really see none of that. I, I've seen more you know, of Oscar doing that, you know, flapping you know, his But he gums. was just bragging about, you know, that, you know. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's just, you know. You, you know what? And he, the, I guess he missed his way in, but I guess he got clear. Yeah. You know, for one of them or something. I think he, I don't know if it was one or two, but I just heard that he, you know, that he got clear for the first one. So. Yeah. I think, I think with the. He's a good kid though. I, I like him. We'll just see what happens. I was hoping that. You know, it was it was a good fight, you know, but I kind of already knew the outcome. You know, I knew Canelo was gonna dominate the fight. Right. You know, it it reminded me of a young Canelo and Mayweather. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Man. You know, I think Dude wasn't ready for Canelo. You know, because in reality, you know, who has he fought? You know, he hasn't really fought any big names right. like Canelo. You know the the list of names under Canelo. You know it's and not not like you said. There's no scrubs. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, right. You know there's actually some some. Uh, I think Canelo was his first pound for uh, pound boxers. He was his first real. Yeah, because he got the taste of it, bro. Right. You know it's you know it's no comparison. You know it's the level of experience and you know like you said you know he's not a he's a fighter but he's not a boxer. Mm -hmm. You know, a boxer. He you know he studies you. He he's gonna he's he's gonna he's gonna throw a right just to fool you, and then and boom. boom, he's gonna lure you in and boom, yeah. counter you real quick. That you know, so true. you know, that hey, I kind of already knew what was gonna happen. I knew Canelo was gonna win, and you know, I you know I I like the kid. You know, he's dope. He's a dope boxer, but I don't think he was ready. Yeah. Now let's let's see what happens on his next fight. Let's see. Uh, he has to win to mm -hmm. keep you know to keep that ball rolling. You know, because you know, all, hand, all you know, all eyes are on him right now. You know, what, even what do you think of that, uh, that that other young kid, um, Ryan Garcia? Because mm. he's looking cold. I like, yeah. You know, he he, uh, he fought uh, Devin Haney not too long ago, and you know, put the beatings on him, man. Like you said, we, <laughs> we you know. We yet to see what happens. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited. You know, so I wasn't. Ex I haven't been excited for boxing in a while because there was just too many. You know, yeah. you know, this whole thing. You know, with Mayweather and you know, just had me all jacked up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like he kept running from everybody. He's just a runner. <laughs> I'm a track star. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> unbelievable. So, but, hey, yeah. So, but you're right. You know what I mean? Um, the sport of boxing right now, you know, is exciting things happening. And, uh, you know, like I said, I'm a fan of the sport. So, you know, I'm definitely, you know, tuning in every other weekend, you know, watching these pound for pounds, man. Mm -hmm. You know, go at it and well, shit. Let's, let's see what happens in a few, you know, with oh, Mike yeah. Tyson oh, yeah. situation. Yeah, stay tuned on that. We'll be, you know, seeing <laughs> who wins out of that. Hopefully Tyson comes out victorious on that one, yes, man. Sir. Yes, sir. So, so we're going to get into the interview portion of the show, man, you know, and get to know our guests. And um, so go ahead, Land Prince, you know. Well, how can we start this uh, introduction? It's very basic, very simple. I'm a Bay, uh, well, I can't even say, I, I, I'm a Bay Area resident. I was born in Nicaragua. I started my, you know, how can I say, not, I don't even think my career in Nicaragua, just like I was a big fan of radio. Mm -hmm. As a kid, I love music. I knew that somehow, some way, I was gonna be involved in it. Mm -hmm. um, then I'm, you know, I, we left Nicaragua. We moved into the Bay Area. How old were you when I was here? Nicaragua? I was, I think, I was uh, 11, 12, You know what I'm saying? When I moved mm -hmm. from our country, and um, came to San Francisco. I um, I was living in the Mission District. If anybody knows the Mission District, is you know. Big Latin community out there, and um, and I just you know was just getting to meet people. 
Mm-hmm. As I was going to school and, and I was uh, introduced to a DJ who was living next door to me. His name is his name is De- DJ Eddie Def. So he was the actual guy who who introduced me to turntables and mixer and st- so he was kind of like my mentor. Yeah. So for so a while. So what did for, you think when you f- you when you first laid eyes on your I first turntable? I was like, turntable? man, this is dope. The first thing I, I said to my mom, I was like, I need these. Exactly. So she, my mom put them on layaway. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was the beginning. I was practicing day in and day out for four months. I think I was, I, I don't even think I did anything until like a year after I, I started to, you know, my practicing DJ. And it's, it's when I started to like, okay, you know, I think I'm ready. You know, I think I have enough music. I think I might go to, you know, let me, let me rock some kids and let me rock some, not even kids and yes, let me rock some house parties. Yeah. So how old are you at this time? You know, I was, like I said, I was, I think at that time, I'm like 14, you know, yeah, 15 yeah. years old. Teenager. So I was a teenager. So then I started to do house parties for 50 bucks, garage oh, parties, you know, making some money. And then I just kept going, man. I kept going, kept going. And then I, um, I started doing clubs. But I was underage, so I was in the booth. But they would have a, you know, they would have the booth cover because <laughs> then they want to see a young man, you know, some young kid DJing at the club. Yeah. So I was doing some some hot clubs in the Bay Area, in the San Francisco, and then um, as I was in the clubs, a scout from the radio station, another DJ, found me mm-hmm. and groomed me, and eventually I started to DJ at a station called KMEO. Which was one of the biggest stations, you know, in San Francisco. It's like the that was like Cameo was like the Hot ninety seven in New York, mm-hmm. and so on and so on. So I started to just as an intern, just kind of you know doing things, and then eventually I got a shot to be on the air, to DJ on the air. Oh yeah. And then you know I was the DJ in training. You know, let's say there was a big old sign in the booth that said DJ in training and shit. And you know, shout out to my boy Alex Mejia, who's the was the man who uh, introduced me to, to that station and to you know to the whole lane you know Club One Hundred Six, just uh, introduced me to a great brotherhood of DJs who were part of that show, who are still friends with today, and it was at the beginning of a beautiful journey for me as as a radio DJ. You know, I was getting plaques, I was breaking records, I was meeting artists. I met Usher when he was a baby, you know, mm-hmm. Lauren Hill and you know the Fugees. And you know, so you know, I broke records like you know, like Robin S. Show me love. Yeah. Like back in those days, you know, back 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 in the days. And um, so I did, I did the, you know, I did radio for like a long time. I think I was, I would say like maybe five, six years. And then I was offered an opportunity to move to LA to become a, a music editor for a magazine called Hits. At the time, Hits magazine was the number one trade magazine. Mm-hmm. And um, and overall, like you know, when I tell you that the number one trade magazine, we talk about like anybody who was you know at the labels would mess with you know with hits, you know, they would bring artists over. I mean, I, I can't even tell you like the kind of interviews that I've done with Little Kim, like we just you know, Guru, you know, rest in peace, like you yeah, know, just yeah. so many artists. So oh, by the way, when I was at KMEL, um, I used to work with Sway. And if you know Sway on the radio, Kids, yeah, that's my boy. It's a oh, personal wow. friend of mine. We used to do radio together. You know, he interviewed Pac before he passed away. This pictures of me and Biggie. Oh wow! You know, like days before he died. You know, he came to San Francisco to play us the album, and then he was dead on Saturday. That was a Thursday, and he died Saturday. Oh wow! Pictures of us together. Um, I got pictures with Big Pun, a guy who I used to work with. You know, what I'm saying back in the days. Um, Aaliyah, I have drops from Aaliyah and a lot of different artists, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's crazy. I listen to these drops and it's like, wow, it's like, I get the chills because these people are no longer, Nay Dog, people yeah. who, are, who have been in the game for a long time and, you know, they're no longer with us. But, um, so, you know, I did a lot of dope, amazing work in the Bay Area. Next chapter of my life took me to LA, became, a, you know, an associate editor for a magazine called Hits. I did hits for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, did a lot of different things. I was, you know, their DJ. You know, I did, I did stuff with the Backstreet Boys. I, I you know, I met in sync before they were in sync. Yeah, Beyonce came to my building mm-hmm. at hits. You know, when she was with Destiny's Child, 
I remember I was like, oh, look at that little belly button ring. And her dad <laughs> smacked me in the hand. Hey, boy, she's 15. I'm like, oh, my bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. So, you know, you know, just it was it was a fun. I mean, I have photos on my Instagram with Eminem that I took at Hits, you know, when before he was Eminem, you know. So, oh, yeah. like, so it's just beautiful memories. And then um, I did that for for a long time. I think I, I did it for like four years. And then uh, a friend of mine who used to work for MCA Records, Troy Marshall, mm -hmm. another mentor of mine, <clears throat> he said, hey, man, you, will you be interested to come and work for a record company? So I'm like, you know, what? That's a, and I'm a DJ working for a record company. That's, that's amazing. So I went. Mm -hmm. So I put him in my notice. People were, his were not happy when I left, especially my boss. He was not happy. He made it impossible for me to leave that building. But I eventually left. So I went to go work for MCA Records and um and I was, you know, like in charge of mix shows, you know, so dealing with DJs all across the country. Yeah. National you know, mix show director. Working with, you know, like Mary J. Blige, working with Common. I was in the road with Common, taking him around. Funny story, you know, with Common that it, when I was taking him on the road to do radio mm -hmm. promo, he was on the phone with Erica. Badu. Yeah. Who you know? Who's a Dallas native? You know what I'm saying? But um, and we were just you know, like I said, from artists like Common, Mary J, uh, the you know the Roots, uh, you know Most Def, Talib Kweli, like just the list was you know endless of artists you know on that roster, and that was a great experience for me, um, as a startup for, as a, as for a label. It was like my first label job. I, you know, I was still like green in the in the, in the mix, but. I learned a lot. I was there for two years, <clears throat> and then the label went black. Basically, the you know they shut down the label, so I was under contract, so I was still getting paid. Mm -hmm. So I went to go and play golf. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And then I get a call from my boy Joey Carvello, who's still around in the mix. He was working at TVT Records, the home of uh, Little John. You mm -hmm. know. The Union Twins, Tidra Moses, even Nine Inch Nails. But the most important artist out of that label that came out for me, a good friend, till this day, is Pitbull. So me and Pitbull go back 16, 17, 18 years since we've known each other. Pictures of us together on IG when he was still wearing his white beater. <laughs> Not even suits back then. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about 300 pounds, big boy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So... That was a, that's been a, a friendship that I cherish, you know. Proud of you know Pitt and what he's done with his career and stuff, and I've been working with him, you know, for a very long. You know, we worked together for a very long time until recently. You know, working you know for uh, Globalization, which is a station on Sirius XM. Mm -hmm. I was on that station for you know a little over six years, um, doing my show. So, you know, that ride was good. Um, you know, then pandemic hit and things kind of just kind of like went a little bit crazy, as you know, for everybody. Oh, yeah. I left New York. I was in New York for... So were you in New York during the pandemic? Yes. I was. I moved to New York in 2013, and then I was there until the pandemic. So um, July of... Like, everything got shut down in New York. So I'm like, mm, what am I going to do? You know, speaking to my family, my sister's like, what are you going to do? You should move to Texas. She's been trying to have me come here for a long time. Mm -hmm. She would send me, you know, cowboy stuff. I'll send it back. <laughs> She'll send me, you know, star stuff. I'll send that back. I'm like, stop, just stop sending me things because I will send them back. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, you know, how much are you paying for your rent? All right. So I told her, she's like, why don't you just come over here and save your money? And, you know, you can crash with us. You can stay with us. You know, you can do your thing, whatever. So I did. So I just like, you know, there was nothing. New York was shut down for two and a half years. So I was like, there's nothing here left to do. My life was a complete shutdown. Mm -hmm. I was still working for Sirius. I could do it remotely, which I did. And then, um, and I've been here ever since. So, and as soon as I landed here, I landed in July, you know, Texas was closed for like a month. Mm -hmm. I was already working in August. I was, you know, DJing at Bombshells. I was DJing at a bunch of places, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I just started building relationships in locally with, you know, with the DJs. I already knew DJs in town as well. 
And I just got myself, you know, I said, since I can't, because for me, I was a traveling DJ. I was DJing all over all, all over the U.S. And for the most part, I was doing about 60 shows outside the U.S. Mm -hmm. And I was in, you know, Asia. I was in Europe. I was all over the place. And that was my, that was my name. I was an international DJ. I was just always, in, you know, out of the country doing shows. Um, but now, you know, we pandemic hit. Everything got shut down. All these countries where that I used to, you know, go and do shows, it was a wrap. All the clubs are wrap. Those, you know, those clubs were shut down for years. Mm -hmm. And as as of recently, I just started going back. You know, mm -hmm. this past year I went to, you know, went back to Germany. I went back to, you know, I was in Poland. I was in Austria. I was in Croatia. I was in Macedonia. Like I was just trying to reestablish the relationships with the new club owners, the new clubs that are opening up now because a lot of the my friends, uh, you know, they retired, they went out of business, you know, they're no longer in, in, in the scene. So yeah. I had to meet up with, uh, you know, the new generation of of uh, promoters and club owners and stuff. So I went to go do some shows and I went to go build, you know, build some some relationships. You know, so I'm planning on going back. And like I said, just Dallas is home base for, for me for right now. But at the same time, you know, it's like. I want to go back and forth, you know, because that's where the real money's at. Like, yeah. locally, money's cool, but I could, you know, I you could make... But international you know, money's International money, you know, you can make bank. Yeah. You know what so I'm saying? So which, which country to use, like, I got I got to return back. You know, they just... Well, Croatia's been good to me. You know, oh, really? that's a place that, you know, it's a beautiful country. They have a beautiful coast. Um, you know. How's the environment? It's amazing. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, Definitely that's amazing. That you get to travel all over the world so, you know, doing what you like, love. Germany's been good. Frankfurt's been good. Like, you know, Berlin. I have mm -hmm. friends in Berlin. Um, so, like I said, London, the UK. I mean, even like, you know, going to like Latvia and all kinds of different locations, man. It's, just, it's you know, Bulgaria. It's been crazy. So, like, it's been a blessing to be able like, from a kid from Nicaragua to... You know, go to all these look, you know, like places. You know, going to Vietnam. Yeah. Going to, you know, I used to do, I used to DJ um, in Singapore for the Formula One races. Yeah. You know, I I brought Justin Bieber to one of my parties. You know, because his DJ is a friend of mine. So, just pulling all the relationships and stuff like that. You know, doing in in you know tours in India, um, Australia. Yeah. You know, saying uh, so, I mean, Thailand. You know, it's, it's you know Malaysia. It's, it's it's been it's been a beautiful ride. I can't complain, man. It's been it's been amazing. Got an impressive uh, resume there, man. Yeah, man. It's like I said, yeah. I just do it. I you know stay in my lane, mm -hmm. stay humble, and just you know keep it moving. I just uh, you know I don't brag. I just you know I just have people do videos of my stuff that I do, and I would just post it. I'll post it on my socials, and that's it. Yeah, man. you know. So uh, let, let's say there's 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 a young kid right now, you know, with turntables, and he thinks it's it's impossible. What Never. would you say to them? Never. That's one thing I do. I mentor people. I, I show these young DJs how to do it. You know, you know. Like I want to. To be honest with you, I'm gonna start like I want to do it like a maybe like a class. Yeah. Or like I want to be a speaker. Mm -hmm. You know. It, but there's there's just a lot of stuff that that's going on in the DJ community that we don't really address, especially you know f you know for you know the up and coming DJs, even the older DJs. You know that we don't have. I would say 98% of the DJs right now don't have health benefits. For the most part, if somebody goes, somebody falls or, you know, somebody, you know, becomes ill, you'll see everybody's off, you know, they go from me page because these DJs don't have benefits. And that's something that we need to focus a lot on. We need, you know, we go out there, rock clubs. Mm -hmm. For the most part, these DJs are getting fucked up. They're, you know, getting drunk, blah, 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 blah. That's, that's why I don't drink no more. I used to have my, you know, I had my time when I was, I was reckless, but it got to a point where like I was on tour and I couldn't, I couldn't drink every night, man. Imagine getting jacked up every night, God. every, how can you function? Yeah. And you have to be at a hundred percent every night doing your show because they're paying you a lot of money. You cannot be faded or, you know, or, or hung over. You know, it's just too much. You know, getting on a plane or the people from, the, you know, from the airline not letting you on the plane because you reek like alcohol. Oh, no, nah, we cannot let you on. You you smell like you're, like you're just, like you just drank a whole situation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This happened. 
Well, they would not let me on the flight because they thought I was, you know, I was drunk. And I wasn't drunk. I was just, you know, I drank a lot. So it was coming out of my pores. Of course, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But those situations. And I just, I was moving from one city to the next city. You know. And I just slept a lot. Trying to get, you know, my body to rest. And even the big artists. I mean, I'm talking to like a guy like David Guetta. I said, man, I just saw you here and your show was insane. And then a week later, I saw you here, and then you were like, mm, you didn't look, your show was not 100%. He goes, bro, I'm I'm exhausted. I've been on the road for like the last 10 days, and it's just been nonstop, and just, we get tired. Uh-huh. You know? But back to the point of telling, you know, these young DJs, it can be done. There's nothing that you cannot do. You know, it just takes, it just takes determination, and you have to make it a goal of yours, like, you know. Be dope, you know. Be about your craft. Make sure that you know you are, you know, like, what's gonna set you apart from the million other DJs there are out there trying to travel. So you have to create yourself a lane, you know, and you know, and build relationships. Networking is a must in this business because if you don't network, you're dead in the in the water. It's a must networking. Millions of times that I took myself to a. Back in the days to all these conventions, you know, I paid out of my own pocket. Yeah. I went to other cities to visit DJs. The way I started my whole situation when it came to international travels, I was I would connect with DJs in different countries. And I'm like, hey, man, I mean, I'll fly to come see you. Will you let me get on? I just want, the only thing I want, I said, I want, I want to be seen. I want to rock the crowd. And then you get, you'll get what, you know. How can I say you you understand you know what I'm trying to sell? And that's what it took. So like sometimes the club will fly me and will, wouldn't pay me. Or we we we'll do a trade or I'll fly myself and they'll pay me. So it was like a whole, you know, kind of like crazy trade where like, you know, until I got to a position where like now they're flying me first class. Now I'm getting paid and I'm doing a tour. So it's not like I'm just going to do one show. I was doing, you know, I was out there. If I'm gonna go all the way to Asia. Might as well, you know, stay out there for a week or two uh-huh. doing shows, getting this paper. So, again, it's like, it's just trying to, like I said, you have to network and find some a mentor. Somebody who's a DJ as well, who understands the lane and the things and the questions that you can answer for them. Because it, these, these young kids, I had a lot of questions and I didn't have people to guide me. But I, but I still found some people. Yeah. You know, till this day, they're friends who, you know, who show me the way and, you know, and told me how, you know, things were, you know, were going to be done. And I'm thankful for that. Always, um, you know, I'm blessed. So, you know, so I want to continue to uh, to travel, DJ, and, uh, you know, eventually I'm going to retire, you know, and let the young the young ones come and take over. Yeah. I don't, I'm not afraid because, you know, it's generations. I, I did it myself. And that's, it's just part of the rotation. Yeah. But so you want to make sure that you put the right people in those positions. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Kind of like passing the torch. Exactly. You know, there's a few DJ schools out here in Dallas um, there who are definitely doing that stuff and teaching, you know, the, the, the generation the proper way of doing things. So yeah. I'm excited. I'm really looking forward to it. That's dope. That's you know dope, man. You know. You know, hopefully, you know, these these youngsters, you know, these new uh, up and coming DJs, you know, get it right. I mean, let me tell you one thing. You could become a millionaire being a DJ. Either you can make six figures or you can make a million. And there's people that I know that have made millions. So don't be afraid. Go get it. Because it could be done. It could got, be done. Got, got to chase it. You, you know, got to chase it. it. it, it you takes have to chase it. Hard work and dedication. Oh, 100%. You know, 100%. and anything you do. You know, any, any aspect in your life, you know, raising a family. In any kind of career, yes. Yeah, it you know, it, if you don't put 110%, then, you know, the proof not, is in the pudding. It's not going to work, yeah. You have to be about it. Oh, yeah. You know, that's the only way you're going to win. That's the it. That's the only way live, it's going to happen. sleep, and breathe your craft. You yes. got perfection. Make, you know, perfected and uh, you'll reap benefits from it. Of course. It. Like I say, you know, I'm a, I'm in a good place. Okay. Myself, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, yeah. you know, like, uh, I'm comfortable. I don't like to be too comfortable, but I'm comfortable. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I put myself in positions where, like, okay, 
I took my money, I saved it, I invested. That's what I've done. So by the time I retire, I don't have to stress about money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I have properties. I so do, like that, the, I do the future Airbnb you stuff. won't hate the, the, the present year. Right, of course. <laughs> I, could, I could be, you know, back home, you know, back in Nicaragua. I'm chilling. I could retire there. Maybe I retire in Europe. I don't know. There's many possibilities. But yeah. definitely not here. Yeah. Definitely not here, bro. <laughs> it's crazy to say that, but it's like, I don't know. Um, you know, I see my mom and the struggles that she goes through, you know, when she retired here and it's not, it's not, and, and she, you know, she worked her life, you know, she worked hard for all her life. And I just don't see, if you're not safe, if you didn't save money and you expect to live off social, you know, security. social security and other things, man, it's a wrap. Oh yeah. It's a wrap. It's sad to say, but it's a wrap. You have to have extra money, man. Especially with nowadays, you know. Save your pennies. Save your pennies, my G's. I'm telling you, you have to do it. Hey. No matter what it is. There you go, man. You know, Land Prince came in, you know, dropping some gems. You know, um, you know, I appreciate you coming through, okay. man. Like I said, there's a lot of stories. There's more stories about my, you know, just um about just my career and the things that I've done, the accomplishments, you know. And working with so many dope artists and stuff like that. But, you know, I used to have a, a conglomerate called the Bump Squad DJs. Mm -hmm. Bump Squad DJs was a, about a 300 plus DJ coalition mm -hmm. worldwide. Oh, wow. DJs from Europe, from Asia. From, and I used to do these conventions and they would fly in. They were, I would do conventions in LA and all I did, and I would pay for it. I would pay for everything. And the only thing that I asked the guys was just to fly in them, you know, fly yourself in. And I got everything from transportation, hotel rooms, food, all that stuff. And I, you know, thank God the labels back then would help me pay for this bill. But yeah, uh, but it was about getting everybody together. Uh, these labels will bring their artists, like you know, up and coming artists who are who are getting ready to drop gems. Um, you know, i.e., like we, I remember when when the game was about to come out, and it came to our DJ convention and spoke to all the DJs, play all, they played, you know. His tracks, and everybody was, you know, I had a, I, I, I rented a mansion. Yeah. In Beverly Hills. Um, Bone Thugs and Harmony was performing at the mansion. Snoop was performing at the mansion. So, you know, they were dropping new music. Snoop, uh, I told Snoop, I said, hey, man, I want you to, you know, do your thing. But at the very end, for those that smoke weed, I want you to get them fucked up. So he got all the weed smoking DJs. They went into a room with Snoop and got faded. That was amazing stuff. So, uh, so from all the from all the celebrities you ever met, which one, I guess, was a disappointing meeting them? Because a lot of people say, you know, a lot of times. Yeah, you know, it's it's hard to say, you know, because everybody was so nice. Um, it's um, maybe J Lo. Cause I remember, and and we go back to the Diddy thing. Yeah. So back in the days when I used to, when I used to work for Hits, we used to we used to do this convention in Miami, mm -hmm. and we asked Diddy to be one of the speakers in, in a particular panel, and this is when he was dating J Lo, mm -hmm. and she was in the back, you know, chilling, while he was in the you know while he was a mod, in the moderator you know in the, in in the panel. And I went back there. I was like, oh, my God. You know, I was excited. Can we take a picture? And she said, no. <laughs> <laughs> she straight shut me down. And then I saw her like years later. I'm like, yo, let's take a picture. And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> what? And I, and, I, and I told her the story. She goes, oh, my God. Blah, blah, blah. Nah, bro. It's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> Not happening. Yeah. <laughs> But no, nah, it's just, I don't, I don't think there's been ever... Um, Been a person who I met who was, uh, you know, an asshole, you know, per se. Mm -hmm. Everybody has their days, you know, their good days and their bad days, you know. They're but human. They're human. But for the most part, they're, you know, it's always been a uh, professional setting for me and stuff. So, so from, so now I met Nas. I just had lunch with the DOC, you know. Who else? Of course, we were talking about Cypress Hill. I'm just going through your records back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, um, you know, 
it's been a, like I said, the career has been a blessing. So you know, I've done yeah. movies too. Oh, wow, but I, that's for the you know part two. He said part two. You know, Sister Act. Hey, Sister Act, the first one. Yeah, I did all the graffiti in that movie. Oh wow! And the, the director was so impressed that he put me in the movie. That's dope. So, you know, I was a, I play a graffiti artist in the movie. <laughs> oh wow! So it's uh, like I said, my I'm writing a book about my journey. Yeah, it's called Music Is My Weapon, um, and uh, it'll be out soon. So. Stay tuned. Hey, you Pictures, stay tuned. and it's going to be dope. Yeah, stay so, tuned. Lampris got some stuff cooking, man. I appreciate and, you for having and, me. And uh, I appreciate you coming through, man. Sharing my you little know, story. This this is my way of, you know, giving you your flowers, you know, and your impressive career. And, um, hey, man, thank you for stopping by and showing us some love, man. Appreciate you, man. Let yeah. me know when I could come back so I could talk some more smack about oh, oh, yeah. whatever is on the <laughs> radar. <laughs> So you got any uh, special shout outs you want to send out there? Man, big shout out to my boy uh, Ricky Rincon, my manager, Alex Mejia, and uh, everybody that follows me on social media. I appreciate you. My, You know what? I'm a Fortnite player, Fortnite team. I Fortnite team, Fortnite boys as well. I don't know if you guys play Fortnite, but I'm a... Yeah, you're a gamer I'm a, too? I'm a gamer. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. So we get down and dirty, man. So big shout outs to all the homies and stuff that are watching. Uh, and stay tuned. We'll be back. Maybe, hey, I, maybe I'll bring an artist with me next time. I don't hey, know. Yeah, but you yeah. won't know unless y'all stay tuned. Exactly. Man. Stay so, tuned. So, man, I, I, you know, I appreciate you coming through, man. Stop by. You know what? Love, man. Ah, oh, man, I'm thinking. I'm a, I'm I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you a teaser. Maybe I'll bring Raekwon here. Okay. Because you know he lives here. Oh no, I didn't know that. The whole world is here. Oh, for real? Yeah. Where you been? Shit. <laughs> hey. So his bodyguard is from Nicaragua. Oh wow. That's my boy. So I'm like, I already knew, I already knew Rayquan for you know from a while back, but he just reconnected us as of recently. So I'm actually gonna have you know have a spot in Nicaragua, and I'm gonna have him come to my spot so we can spend like a like a weekend at the beach. Yeah. So, but you know what? Let's talk about it. Let's oh, make yeah. it happen. Yeah, I, want, yeah. I want to contribute somehow, some way. You know, hey. utilize those relationships. Like hey, I said, you know, I, I, what I always say, "Mi casa es tu casa." You know Let's go, I mean? baby. Stay tuned. So, hey, y'all stay, stay tuned. tuned. Some big things coming through, man. And uh, I appreciate you know Land Prince coming through. You know, showing, uh, sharing the stories. And um, like I said, man, y'all stay tuned. And if uh, y'all don't follow my man's, y'all better follow him, man. At Latin uh, Prince, that's it. There you At go. Latin Prince there on you Instagram, go, man. follow. Your there boy. you go. So, Thank hey, you. like I always say, man, keep your ears to the streets, man, and I'll catch you on the blog, man. It's your boy, Money Elms, and we's out. Appreciate Peace. you, Money Elms. Elm Street, baby, let's go. Welcome to Elm Street. Merch available now on SourKidsMerch.com.